Mark Brown first began experiencing mental health difficulties as a teenager, but he didn't seek medical help until he was around 20. At that point, I came from a place and came from a culture where we didn't talk about that stuff. And because we didn't talk about that stuff, there was low demand for services about that stuff. Mark was eventually diagnosed with bipolar depression and now promotes new approaches to mental health issues through a social enterprise organisation. He's seen the stigma around depression ease in recent years. The wider conversation about mental health has kind of made it, in some respects, easier to recognise that you might actually not be the only person in the world experiencing these things and also that you might not be just a kind of broken machine malfunctioning. Attitudes may be changing, but Mark says treatment for depression remains hit or miss, a blunt tool. There have been no major advances for nearly 30 years, and experts say antidepressant drugs and talking therapies are only effective in around half of patients. But new landmark research could soon help to change that. Published in April, the study involved over 200 scientists and genetic data from 135,000 people reportedly with depression and nearly 350,000 people without across several countries. It has vastly expanded our knowledge of the genetic factors that increase risk of depression. Dr Jerome Breen of King's College London is one of the report's co-authors. We identified 44 genetic associations for depression. That overall represented more than a doubling of what we know about the genetic associations for depression and represented a step change for the field. He says the findings could help spur the development of new types of treatment within a decade, targeting different processes in the brain. Professor Catherine Lewis, who helped lead the study, says genetic factors are only a part of the depression picture when determining new therapeutics. We can change our environment. And so by knowing what types of environment, like having a safe and happy childhood, are um, going to help us deal with depression, reduce the rates of people developing depression, that's sort of where the research will be going in the future, how these two genes and environment work together. British mental health research charity MQ welcomes the findings and says they could help lead to an era of more tailored therapy. Now imagine a scenario where you go in and you're asked about your family history to look at your genetic risk. You're asked around your lifestyle, your sleep patterns, your stress levels, and actually you start to identify someone that is at risk for depression, or maybe even someone that has depression. Mark Brown is optimistic about the new research, but offers a word of caution. The age of personalised medicine is arriving, but whether it will arrive in mental health is another question, um, because ultimately a lot of whether things happen in mental health is not scientific, it's political and social. It's about whether the money and the support is there to do that work. The World Health Organization says more than 300 million people worldwide are affected by depression, but around half of them aren't receiving treatment. But with a movement building towards new and better ways to offer help, more people can hope to lead more mentally healthy lives. Paul Barber, CGTN, London.